Happy New Year to everyone. Thanks for following the channel so far. In this video, I'll show you how I've created my new light sliders. I've created something similar before, but I think these ones are better and more robust. The previous ones used card mod a lot. Card mod is great, but the problem is that it loads last when opening the dashboard so you get twitches and glitches, especially when using quite a lot of custom CSS. With this slider, you can also use the light's RGB value in the design. For this, you will need button card, my slider V2, and decluttering card installed from Hacks. I'm gonna start by adding a new card to the dashboard. First, I'll add a vertical stack, and then I'll add a custom button card to the vertical stack. I'll add my light as entity to the button card, then I give it a custom name and icon. And I will set the tap action to none. I'm making a slider, so tapping will just be in the way. Now let's do some styling. This will just display the icon and name, so it's gonna be pretty basic. Let's add styling for grid, card, IMG cell, icon, and name. I will have two grid columns. First will be 64 pixels, and the second one will be 1FR. Then I'm going to add the icon to the first column and the name to the second column. For this, we need to use I and N, and it needs to be inside apostrophes and quotation marks. For the card, I will just add a fixed height of 75 pixels. I will also come back to this a bit later after I've added the actual slider. Then I'll set both the IMG cell and icon to be 22 pixels wide, and I make the icon white using the hex code. Then I add justify self start to the name, so it's aligned to the left. I set the font size to be 16 pixels and the font weight to be 400. I set the color to be black, but I change this to white later in the video. So that's the first part done. Now let's add the actual slider so we can dim the light. Add a new card by clicking on the plus sign. Instead of browsing for the slider card, I will just add an alarm panel card and edit it in the code editor. It's just quicker for me. Instead of the alarm panel, let's use the custom My Slider V2 card instead. Then add the same light entity as we used before to this card as well. I'm gonna set allow tapping to false and allow sliding to true. This card is similar to button card in a way because it allows us to use CSS on all the individual elements that builds up the card. This is great for customization. So let's add custom styling for container card progress, thumb and track. I'm gonna set the card height to the same as the other card, 75 pixels. And I add a 30 pixel border radius to the container. Just so it's a bit easier to see while I edit, I'm gonna add a margin to push the two cards apart. Now I'm gonna add a gradient to the progress rule. I'm gonna use a website to generate this code. Just play around with this and find some colors you like that suits the rest of your dashboard. Similar to that, I will also add a gradient to the track. This will be the background and also the off state. I have one ready, it's darkish, so I'm just gonna paste that in. Now let's work on that little vertical black line called thumb. There's many things we can do here, but I'm gonna try to create a little white line that's positioned slightly to the left of the progress edge. It's something I've seen in many apps lately. To do this, I'm gonna set the width to be six pixels, the height to be 50%, the color or the background to be white. I'll add a small border radius, and I position it correctly with top and margin right. And you can see that this gives a nice effect. It's indicating that this is something we can grab hold of and drag left and right. If we didn't have this little element, it would just look like a static indicator, like a sensor card that isn't possible to interact with. So now I want to merge these two cards together, so I have the icon and name inside the slider. First, I'll just change the name color to be white. Then I'm gonna add position absolute to the card. This removes this card from the normal document flow, meaning other elements won't know that it exists. This will allow us to position the two cards on top of each other. This card is now behind the slider, so we need to set Z index to one as well. Now it's covering the slider, so we can just set background to none. When recording, I thought it would be smart to show it with a transparent background, but you should just set background to none. Earlier, I added a margin to the slider card, so I just need to remove that so the cards line up perfectly. And that's pretty much it, I just made that little line slightly thinner. And if you want to remove it, you can just set width to 0 pixels. Lastly, I changed the progress gradient to a slightly different color. You can see my code here on the screen. I think this makes the text slightly more readable. This is well and good, but it's really hard to add this for all your lights. So let's simplify the process by creating a template card that we can reuse many times really easily. This will also allow us to, for example, update the colors and have all cards update at the same time. To do this, we need to head into the raw configuration editor. Here I will add decluttering underscore templates to the first line. 
If you have this already, you don't need this first line. Then I will call this template light underscore slider. To start, I will just add a very basic vertical stack card and click save. Now go back into the editor of the card we created and click show code editor. Copy all this code and close the editor, head back into the raw configuration editor and paste it in under light underscore slider, replacing the basic vertical stack card we just created. Then fix the indentation by selecting the code and hitting tab a few times. Now we just need to create a few variables so that we can reuse the slider with different lights. We do this by replacing the entity, name, and icon code. Instead of the actual light entity, we can write apostrophe, two open square brackets. Our variable name, I just use entity. Then two closing square brackets and apostrophe. Then copy this onto the entity of the slider card as well. Now just do the same for the name and icon as well, but make sure to change the variable name. Click save and close out of this editor. To use this template, we can create a new card. This time we can use custom decluttering card. Set template to be light underscore slider. Nothing will show up properly until we start defining the variables. So let's define the entity, name, and icon variables that we set up inside the raw configuration editor. And that's it. You can now reuse this code for all your dimmable lights, and you can delete the first card that we set up. If you want multiple sliders together, it's probably a good idea to add them into a grid or a vertical stack card first. If you're using my custom theme, then you might notice that the sliders doesn't have a gap in between when using vertical stack. We can easily fix that by going into the raw configuration editor and adding a margin bottom of 12 pixels to the slider card. If you're not happy with the gradient, you can of course just generate a new one using the website and paste it into the template. All the light sliders will then update with the new gradient. I know some of you will ask about this because people are nuts about RGB. My only RGB light in the house is in my daughter's room, but let's try to edit the gradient to incorporate the RGB color of the light. In the attribute of the light, we get the RGB color as a list. We can use this in the slider card. So back in the slider card editor, let's remove the progress gradient. We need to write some Java instead. You can see that I've already updated the entity to the RBG light. Add a vertical bar, and on the next line, add three opening and closing square brackets. Inside them, we define a variable called RGB and grab the RGB underscore color attribute of the entity. Close it with a semicolon. Next line again, write return and two backticks. Inside the backticks, we can add the gradient we had before. We just need to modify three numbers. Remove the first number of the last RGBA value. Instead, write dollar sign, open squiggly brackets, close squiggly brackets. Inside the squiggly brackets, write RGB, then open and close square brackets. Inside those square brackets, type zero. Our const variable is a list of three numbers. The zero grabs the first of those numbers. Now just copy this and paste it onto the second and third number as well, replacing the zero with one and two. That should color the gradient the same as the RGB color of the light. How you would actually adjust this RGB value is up to you. It's not currently possible with this slider. You could maybe add a hold action to the first card that opens the light pop-up where you can change the color. My daughter has a button in her room that she can use to cycle through a few predefined RBG values. Sorry, just me from the future. I had to update the RGB version slightly. I realized that the code returns an error when the light is off because the attribute returns null when off. This code on the screen should fix that. And that's it for this video. Hopefully you learned something useful. I currently use this slider in all my dashboards. Most of my lights are automated, but it's still nice to be able to use a slider like this once in a while. Let me know what you think, and if you have any suggestions for future videos. The channel members in the Discord seems to want a new dashboard update, so I will probably do that soon. Thanks for watching. Until next time.